Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video guys to any of you having a BMW guys with a six cylinder gasoline engine. And I'm talking a BMW made between 2005 and year 2013 guys. If you have engine N51, N52, N53, uh, guys, engine or even N54, N55, the video will be helpful. We'll explain how to remove and replace valve cover gasket. Now, we'll demonstrate on N52 gasoline engine, you may have two different kinds of gasket, guys. One looks like that and the other one is just a rubber strip. But the procedure will be almost exactly the same for both of them, so make sure you stay until the end. Now, before we start, let me tell you guys uh, something about the channel. If you need to buy parts, tools, gaskets, anything like that, check out the link in the description of the video below and you can see where we get all our tools and parts from. Number two guys, every single car we get at the shop, we make at least two to three hundred free repair videos guys. Why we do that? Because our mission here at the shop is to save you as much money as we can. All we need guys in return, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, that way we can keep providing this free information to you. So, let me show you what we have specifically here, even though this is a 3 series BMW, it should work guys, on BMW. 1 series, 3 series, 5 series, X1, X3, X5, and in Europe guys that engine has been used on 6 and 7 series BMW. So, that being said, okay, we need to start on the on the valve cover gasket now. So what do we need to do? Okay, pretty simple guys. First, we need to remove the cover right here. We have the fold and taken apart. We made probably close to four or five hundred videos, guys. Uh, on some models, for instance, on the 3 series, you will have the uh, the cow trim piece for the windshield right here, guys. If you want to see how to remove it, it's on our channel and I'll try to put the link in the description of the video below. Uh, we have it for three series, but other cars will be very similar as well. Once you do that, okay, you can get to the valve cover, okay, right here. Valve cover and the valve tonic uh, motor is right here. Some models will have that, some will not. Uh, those are your ignition coils, you can see. So now we need to start, guys, okay, on actually removing, okay, removing that, uh, that gasket. So first we need to disconnect all of the ignition coils, just one by one. Lift up, okay. Disconnect the wire and disconnect the coil itself. Now, we're going to coil number two. So we're going to do that for all six of them. And if you guys need help with something, if you have any problems, let us know, leave a comment below. Uh, uh, we're making that video because you guys requested it. And when we have a time, okay, we'll try to make a video for your problem. Sometimes we're a little bit busy because we have to run the business too, but you get the idea guys, when we have time, we try to make as many videos as we can, so we can help as many of you as we can. That's our mission here at the shop. So, ignition coil number five, and then ignition coil number six comes right after that. Just disconnect each one of them. Now, here guys, things get a little bit interesting. We'll need to remove that bar. Okay, that thing will need to come out from what I see, because otherwise we will not be able guys, okay, to remove the valve cover. Uh, so that uh, brace support, okay, we'll need to remove that cover, okay, right here. I just get it out like that with the fingers of a screwdriver. Once you remove it, you have, okay, inside you will find that you have a, a, um, a big tool right there that you will need to remove. So let's see which one it is now. I think it's reverse Torx and this is 18 maybe, yes, 18 millimeter reverse Torx, okay, perfect. Just get it loose, a couple of revolutions. Don't remove it, guys. You don't have to remove it. We'll explain why. Yeah, that's good, like that, I think. Now, we need to remove this one here next. So let's do that now. Okay, we'll get one socket. That fits. Perfect. We'll put the links to all the tools that we use, guys, or where you can get them from in the description of the video below. This is called a reverse torque socket or female torques also. Perfect. Now, if you grab that thing, it can slide out of there, okay? And we'll explain why. You might need to loosen it a little bit more, it really depends. Okay, you, have, you go through a rubber seal right there, but you can see how it's cut. That way you don't have to remove the whole bolt just to get that uh, support arm out. And you can see it just comes out like that. Now, next guys, we need to, okay, that's where things get interesting as well. Uh, we still need to remove ignition coil number six, that's for cylinder number six. 
some of them are stuck they haven't been removed probably since the engine is new guys not to be saying a big thing but people don't do so much maintenance as they should sometimes to check spark plug gap and things like that and we share all that on our channel definitely check your spark plug gap it can improve your engine performance and fuel economy as well now we need to remove the ground wires for the ignition coils so this is reverse torx 10 millimeter e10 okay two bolts later you need to make sure that you connect your ground wires every everywhere guys otherwise okay it will be bad so go ahead get it loose if you don't connect your ground wires your car may not even start okay this one and then we just uh, have the one okay on this side right there make sure you don't drop your bolts perfect next guys that's where things get interesting some people will try to do it without removing the fuel injectors uh, in my opinion you can damage things don't do it and we'll explain why in a second right here you can see you don't have enough room to get the bolts out and the connectors for the fuel injectors are on the bottom so you need to remove the whole assembly but before we start guys okay let me tell you something you need to disconnect your car battery why because uh, you will spray fuel have fire extinguisher on the side eye protection make sure engine is cold make sure you don't have open flame uh, be prepared to catch yourself or your car on fire anytime guys disconnecting the car battery will actually eliminate some of the risk but not all and uh, uh, that way when you actually disconnect the fuel line you will not spray fuel everywhere because otherwise if you have the battery connected the fuel pump can detect you have low fuel pressure or when you open driver door or once in a while on its own it will activate the fuel pump and if the line fuel line is disconnected you spray fuel everywhere on these modern cars it really matters guys which battery terminal you disconnect first okay we did that the wrong way one time cost us two thousand dollars you don't want that to happen right so uh it really uh, matters which one which battery terminal you disconnect and reconnect first and i'll put a link to a video that explains all that in the description of the video below so please check it out guys very very important video we have the battery disconnected okay uh, we have uh, we have uh, gloves i recommend rubber gloves so you don't touch gl uh, gasoline disconnect the oxygen sensors right here perfect now one more oxygen sensor over there Great. Now guys, we need to disconnect the fuel. You will be leaking some fuel out. Be prepared. Now we uh, may not leak so much out because we actually disconnected it for another video. But what you need to do, grab that fuel line, push it in. Check how much of a play you have. Push it all the way in. While you hold it in, you will need to press that blue thing inside. If it's broken, we have a special video that explains how to disconnect fuel line on BMW without that thing. So check it out, it's on our channel, guys. It will spray, so be careful. Okay, we leaked a little bit out, so we're safe. Now, we need to disconnect the fuel injectors and they have, guys, okay, I believe they have four bolts now that we need to remove. Yes, it is, four bolts. And uh, these four bolts are with 10 millimeter socket, one, two, then we have number three and four over there so we'll try to do that and uh, later we'll see what else we need to do it's a job to replace that valve cover gasket but definitely guys okay you can save quite a bit of money too so with 10 millimeter socket now we're going to remove the four bolts right there okay let's go ahead and do that and uh you have to be guys extremely careful not to drop these bolts what i recommend use uh, use pliers when you get it loose because you will actually end up almost losing that bolt and if that happens guys and you don't have one on hand uh it you will you, you might need to remove the intake manifold and we have the video on the channel how to do that because there are a few things that you can inspect when you remove the intake manifold so i would definitely guys even uh, recommend doing that once in a while because you have gaskets, you have vacuum hoses, you have the PCV valve. So, we're on the last one now, guys. Number four. Alright, it's 
getting a little complicated but we're gonna get it done now the fuel injectors i'll show you we need to lift them up once we lift them up later when you install them guys, you might need to apply a little bit of oil on the oil rings why on the o-rings because otherwise you have hard time installing them you grab them and you pull them almost straight up okay they'll be stuck okay but eventually they'll come out okay and this is the fuel rail with the fuel injectors so we can just pull them to the side those are the o-rings later you need to apply a little bit of oil to lubricate them so you can push all of them in at the same time okay perfect now you can see how much room we cleared here we're going to cover uh, here a little bit to make sure you don't drop something in the holes if you drop something guys and it falls in the valves you can say bye bye to your engine so uh, if that happens what i'll recommend you have to remove the intake manifold and access whatever you dropped through the intake manifold holes towards the intake valves and that way you can actually remove that object okay now awesome what's next let's go ahead and uh, we need to actually remove the valve tronic motor now that's where things get ugly again guys we will explain why you have two super easy screws but first we need to remove one on the bottom that bolt right here is accessible only to that side okay over here you need to pull the wiring harness to the side and you will need to remove it that way so we'll go ahead do that and we'll continue so these guys okay it's a uh, reverse torx 8 millimeter so now let me just uh, situate the camera with the other side with the other hand you need to lift the wiring harness up you need to come right here and start getting it loose uh, once you get it loose okay let's disconnect the okay let's just do that you go ahead and remove the whole screw i'm keeping a little bit of tension on the bar that way we can unscrew it because otherwise okay it's so loose that the ratchet doesn't want to work okay so we'll disconnect the ratchet and we'll just uh, use the extension only okay and you can see the bolt coming loose now it's important not to drop it guys okay working on it almost okay i think i got it out yep this is it this is the bolt okay hold it one second i need to focus that's the bolt that's what it looks like two more bolts and one wire to disconnect for the valve tronic motor there is another gasket if you have valve tronic motor replace this one here that's a weak spot guys you may notice if you have uh, engine oil leaking from here or inside the pockets over there guys it could be from valve tronic motor so that gasket every time replace it when you replace the uh, the valve cover gasket as well i'll put the link in the description of the video below for your convenience so please please check it out where you can get one from okay working on the last bolt now all right perfect this is it valve tronic motor is out guys what else we need to do okay that's when things get interesting we need to disconnect that wire now okay this one it has two okay two clips right here on the side that you need to spread out with a small screwdriver so you can unplug the wire okay careful because that one will break if we pry too much okay perfect this is for the eccentric shaft sensor a very important component for the uh, valve throwing and for the variable timing of that engine now we need to disconnect the one hose towards the back okay and this is uh, this hose is the pcv uh, okay uh, pcv hose you have two things that you need to squish towards each other okay and disconnect it okay let me explain this one right here we have a video how to replace that hose if your fails that's a weak spot as well and they had a recall on the heater element of that hose because if it goes bad you can catch your car on fire now we are going to go ahead and remove the first bolts in the middle of the valve cover with 10 millimeter socket guys we have one two three bolts that we need to do okay 
right there. Between cylinder 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. Get them loose, we'll get a little impact, save us quite a bit of time. If you want to buy one and see where we get, got our order from, we'll put the link. One is out, two, then we have number three. Perfect. Next, guys, we need to go ahead and, okay, and remove these bolts. I'll get pliers so that way we can make our wife a little bit easier. Or they may be stuck, okay, they may be to the point that they stay there. We'll see because they may have retainers on the bottom. Now, we need to start removing all the bolts holding the valve cover to the engine block. And this one will be uh, Torx 10 E10. Okay, let's confirm that. Yep, perfect. So let's do that now. Okay, the bolt comes out. Okay, the bolt comes out. Perfect, just like that. I'll put it here. Collect them, guys. Now we are going to do the other ones as well. Alright, second ball. That's why you cover the holes, because otherwise you can drop a tool or something inside. Number three, four, we go to five, six, Seven, eight, those are just the outside bolts and three in the middle, remember, eight so far. Now, it's hard to see what we have there. Okay, I got the two, we have, uh, okay, we have two bolts here, two of them. One is over here that we need to do with that thing and one is over there. So that will be 9 and 10. And uh, I think we'll need to do them with a short extension probably. We'll see. It might fit. It may not. Yep. Uh, let's see if it's going to fit. If not, we can get a little bit shorter extension. So we actually put another longer extension. That way it can come out more. Well, Removing that one now for the for the other bolt probably we'll have to get a shorter extension because the engine is tilted a little bit You can see BMW six cylinder engines. They're always in an angle uh, And you wonder why uh, so they can bring the center of gravity d uh, Down guys, that's the only thing and we just dropped our bolt. Don't do what we did. Okay Hopefully we'll be able to locate it. Okay once we remove the valve cover So we're working on the other bolt towards the back that's where things are a little bit more complicated because you can see you have a little bit limited room towards the back side. Bolt now, guys. Perfect now. What else we need to do? We need to remove a few more towards the bottom. Those will be hard to get. Let's let's just turn on this quick here towards the front so we can get those and then the other ones we'll do them with with the ratchet. Had to help there. Okay, this one was loose. Did you check this thing out? That's why our gasket probably was leaking too. This one is completely loose too, somebody didn't get this tied the last time. That's, that's crazy, guys. Okay, drop the two. So we'll get this short extension now, okay, and see. 
the three bolts guys on the back on the bottom side are actually completely loose because what i notice okay our car is 2006 model this gasket is made in 2015 and it's original bmw gasket so you can see guys that whoever worked on it last time completely forgot to uh, uh, torque the bolts down to the necessary uh, torque specs and uh, i'll try to find the torque specs and share that with you guys but always recheck all the bolts once you install them and get them tight go one more time and just make sure that they're tight okay this one is a little bit tight so that's a good news the fourth bolt is actually tight so in whatever sequence he worked okay let's see if they come out they do and i think we have only two or three more to go perfect so let's see okay this one there as well Great, now we need to uh, lift that wiring harness up a little bit, come in an angle, we might even, we'll see if we need to disconnect here the wires for the positive cable, okay we have a few more that we need to do, that's the oxygen sensors right there, you can even see your engine mount. So I think we have only three bolts. Which are the hardest to get to so far? Let me get this one loose. Okay, while well we're working on the other one, I'll just do it by hand quick. Because they go super easy. The moment you get them loose, guys, okay, these bolts go by hand. with no problem at all this is it right there you can see I, I removed it with just my hand so the ratchet without extension we're trying to see how we're going to remove these two now guys so we can actually get that valve cover out Okay, everything comes in an angle, almost. Okay, let me just get right here so I can push the two. Okay, let's go a little bit this way. No, not yet. So, we got a swivel head. I'll explain to you in just a second. Okay, perfect. This one is loose, guys. Okay, that's that's what it is. Okay, you can see how it can move, so that way we can access the bolts. And we have one towards the back side. Okay, I'm trying to guide you with my fingers. Okay, up, up, almost. Push down, yep, right there. It might not come loose because that swivel head actually if you use a little impact it will get some of the vibrations and uh, the bolt may not get loose plus the extension reduces the torque as well okay no nope. oh yep come out okay one second okay i'm holding it perfect okay let's see guys if we missed bolt or two maybe nobody knows so we're going to get the Okay, we're going to get uh, the cartoon here, so if everything is loose, we can just pull it out. So we grab it. You have to be careful now not to drop anything inside your valves as well, guys. So let's see. Let's see how much we can come up. Because we have the... Okay, on, on the back side. Somebody needs to just help me a little bit on the back side. I'm stuck there. Okay, so... We need to have two hands for that job. Oh, I just dropped the gasket for the valve turning motor inside. So, one second, one second. 
because I dropped the gasket and I don't want to smash it there. So let's see what else we need to get out of there. So at that point, we remove that seal that holds the upper windshield, windshield cow piece, trim piece. That way, okay, the uh, PCV holes can come out of there. Once you lift it up, you just come out of there. Okay, I'm just stuck, okay, on the bolts too. Okay, these bolts are holding a little bit on the inside on the holes I got stuck. So now, if we pull this wiring harness out, okay, the wiring harness is getting stuck, okay, on one thing right here, so I cannot lift it up. Okay, check it out now, how much I can lift it up. Okay. Valve cover is out. The gasket for the valve tronic motor came out as well, so I'll recommend to actually remove that gasket before you guys, okay, remove the valve cover. This is it, we just damaged one of the gaskets, but we'll be replacing it anyway. This is the one for the spark plugs. If you have oil in the spark plugs, it's due, guys, okay, to that actually a gasket failing in the middle. So that's a common problem as well on these BMWs. So, okay, let me show you what it looks like now. That's what your engine looks like, 134,000 miles. Pretty, pretty good looking engine so far, guys. Now, right here, this, uh, uh, this uh, sensor is very important. Careful not to break it, it's very expensive sensor as well. And uh, this sensor is actually, guys, for the eccentric shaft and for the valve tronic motor detection and all that stuff. So you can see how we remove the valve cover and the gasket. So, now you can go ahead and remove the gasket, guys. Okay, you need to clean everything really good. You may need to get a scraper if you have old silicone, parts cleaner, anything like that, guys. Get and clean everything really good. Then remove the big gasket. Okay, it may be stuck here and there. Eventually, it will come out. Okay, perfect. We need to wipe everything really good. Make sure everything's super clean. Make sure that uh, you don't have flakes or anything like that. You will need to wipe, okay, your cover. Then you will need to wipe your engine as well. Okay, right here. You will need to wipe your engine everywhere. And uh, what you will need to do, guys, at that point, okay, you will need to install the middle gasket right here on the bottom on the cylinder head because we have these guides that actually hold it there and it will stay there and then uh, we're going to uh, install the other the big gasket because it will stay here as well you can see it has those guides okay a few of them and once you install it you can just go ahead and start putting everything together so another thing guys now okay never to uh, forget now we're going to go ahead and order ours always replace that gasket this is the gasket for the eccentric shaft sensor guys this sensor right here if you start leaking oil oil gets inside of it like ours did and i don't know how it didn't quit working guys your car will fail in the uh, what that means uh, when that when oil gets in that sensor you will ruin it and as a result guys okay your car may not start especially when the engine is cold it may start all of a sudden then all of a sudden it doesn't start if that sensor is bad your car may not start at all so that gasket needs to be replaced uh, as well i'll put the link in the description of the video below unfortunately we have to wait a couple of days to receive ours but from that point on you install the new gasket clean the cylinder head really good put the new gasket put the one for the spark plugs install everything in reverse order we took it apart don't forget to replace that one as well and put a new gasket for the valve tronic motor as well guys and uh, i'll try to find the torque specs for the valve cover so you can have that one as well and i'll try to post it in a new updated video so thank you for watching and see you guys next time